Well, hello and welcome to another escapade in the Dave Cave. Oh, out of, out of focus thumb. Okay. And today, what we're going to be doing is nothing, nothing special, nothing exciting, really. We're just going to be changing the mothered screws in the um, front brake master cylinder on my friend's phaser. So Yamaha phaser. Can I zoom in? Oh, that's as far as I can get. I have to move the camera closer uh, so that you can actually see what the what the damage is. What we're going to be doing is changing them for. And get these out. Uh, if I zoom out, we'll see. Do, 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 do. Get these in front of the camera. We can zoom in a little bit, maybe. Maybe get some focusing and everything, but you're like really professional. Uh, so these are hex screw head stainless steel because. For some reason, manufacturers, when they're making their um, bikes, they decide to make the master cylinder screws out of some sort of hard cheese, and so they get mullered really easily. Uh, so I've had to change them on my bike, and change them. On, well, I'm changing them on these just a favour because that's what he's doing. And um, these were complete with a little uh, Allen wrench. Well, one pounds ninety-five. Uh, they're actually listed as being. Uh, let's see, what does the thing say? Uh, GSF 600 Bandit Mark 1 and Mark 2 and 95. Oh, that's, uh, uh, Mark 2, 95 to 05. But the majority of the master cylinder things are like this, or they may be the longer ones. I think these are. 12 mil and you get 17 mil ones as well which is slightly bigger so hopefully this is the right ones for these if not I'll keep them as spares for my bike and I'll just order some more because they're only two quid each right so now ready for a jump cut while I zoom in on what we're gonna do actually before we do that let me uh, scoop down just to show you with the tools that we're gonna be using um, nothing fancy, I have an assortment of screwdrivers and a hammer because when I show you now you'll see why we may need a hammer it's really important um, to use the correct screw uh, driver type head thing to get your screws out to stop you mullering them like these do because once they start getting ground up then they it just gets worse every time you do it so it's really important to use the correct size and there's different types of um, a screw head as well I'm not sure uh, let's see so obviously you've got your flat ones which are really easy to work with but then you've got this type which is um, quite sharp into the point and you've got these Duller ones. Can I zoom in? We got these duller ones as well. And on top of that, I think I've got one in one of my screwdrivers here. There's also an another type again, which is this one. Now, if you've got screws that use this type of head, they're actually really good because when you use this type, um, decking screws tend to be like this, you don't get many decking screws on your bike unless you've done work on it yourself like I have, although currently I don't have any decking screws on my bike, I might have to see if I can work those somewhere. They actually stop um, the bit from cavitating out when you use the correct one. So you can't use this type on different screws, on different types of screws, and if you try and use a normal screwdriver to like that one, let me get into focus, then what happens is it will cavitate out of the um, the recess that you're trying to undo and just mash up that the metal and then it's just screwed. Your screw will be screwed. Right, so I'm just going to move the camera now and then we'll see if we can get these uh, screws out and just replace it. It's a really easy job. It's 
a really easy job. In terms of spanners required, it would be a zero, zero spanner. Because you need screwdrivers. But no, there's nothing to it. So, two ticks and I'll zubba zubba zub. Okay, so let's just have a look at this focus here. Right. So, this screw, that one's alright. I won't have any problem getting this one out at all. That's, I can feel there's a, a little bit of nyom nyomedness on it. So, it has been mothered a little bit. But this one, I may. There's, I don't think there's actually any of the original um, thing left. So I'm going to see, I'm going to try a couple of different bits and see what I can get to fit. Because I may have to go with the, oh, right, okay. So what I'm looking at here is actually a, I don't know what they call those, like a star drive. So because this is quite soft metal, I'm just going to tap that in a little bit and see if we can use that. So I'm not tapping too hard because I don't want to break anything. I just want this to get a little bit of bite. So just tiny taps. Okay. Let's get our adapters. See if we can get that undone. No, it's just rotating. That may be a bust on that one. Okay, right. Let's go back to the original one. So I'm going to find a bit. Let me go in this one. Okay, that one is perfect. So we'll use that and we'll come back to the other one. Okay. Because we can double check the size as well then in case I've got to order some different ones. Whoop. Yep. Okay, so that is the right size. So I think what I'm gonna do is pop a little bit of copper grease on the new nut, the new doodah. Even though it's stainless, it can still get a bit of corrosion. So just a little bit of copper grease, just so they don't seize. So it's easier to get them out in the future. So I'm putting on. A little friend in. that bad boy up okay this allen key if you can see does not fit in here this is too small an allen key for this size bolt so I'm not going to use that and use one of my own if I've got one to fit because otherwise that is just going to muller it Too big. Um, I have to use this for now, but this is exactly the reason why these things get ruined. So even though this came with it, and that's not the right one. So I'll have to tighten that up properly at another time. Now what are we going to do about this? Oh yeah, right, okay. The next thing I'm going to try is... You know, I've got a, a drill bit thing that will... for drilling these things out, but I don't want to do that because... I think it would cause too much damage. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to cover this over with some towel. Oh. Now I'm going to spray release spray, and then we'll come back to it later. Release spray, WD-40, anything like that. 
because I want to give us the best opportunity to get this that we can. Because I think part of the problem is this is rusted and so there's probably a film of, uh, of corrosion that's sort of locked it in place. So where's me uh, stuff? So this is just El Cheapo DP60 Super Strong Penetrating Maintenance Spray. It's bullshit. It's from um, Bean and Bargains or something. It's like one pound. But if it will get it in there and under there, then that'll be fine. So I'm just giving it. Good old spray. Clean off the excess while we're here. There we go. I'm going to leave that now and we'll come back and come back to it in probably half an hour. Just to give it time to get in and start working on the corrosion. So, time lapse ahoy. Okay, so I've just had my dinner. Chicken gel frazzy, thank you for asking, it was lovely. And so this has been soaking for, must be close to an hour. I don't think you can leave this stuff for too long, I'm just going to give it a couple more little taps. Oh, and it's raining, you can probably hear that. But of course it's raining, this is Wales, it always rains. So hopefully the tapping will do two things. One, knock this further in and also loosen any of the, the horribleness. So fingers crossed. No, it's just mother in it. Okay, um, I'm gonna try and drill it very gently out. Try and get some light in here. What I'm trying to do is make sure that I only drill the screw and not the actual casing around it. Okay, so this drill bit is roughly the size of the shaft. So when I drill through, what should happen is the neck of it should come off. Should, there's also shoulds in this, I might be buying them a new uh, thingy uh, reservoir, but we'll see. Don't want to go too far, not too fast. It's nice and slow because ideally what we want to do because if I can get the head off, then we need to leave enough of the screw thread that I can actually grab with a pair of grips or a pair of pliers. There we are, got a bit of movement. I don't know if you saw that on camera, it just went that way. Let's see if we can move it about a bit. Da -da! Oh yeah! After all that. Rob, I hope that you're bloody appreciative of that. Okay. So, bring these iron filings off, put that one back in, Yeah, the other one, and I eventually get it out of the, the doohickey. Oh, 
little tiny bit up. Couple of grease down there. Making sure not to cross the threads because that would be a real, real bad thing to do at this point. <laughs> In the proceedings, um, a tip if you're scared about crossing threads. If you turn your nut or whatever it is anti-clockwise first, unless it's the right-handed thread, um, the opposite way to which you would do it to tighten it up. And you can feel like a, a click as the thread gets to the end and then restarts again. You can feel it. And then all you got to do then is just tighten it up and you will not have a cross thread. Dee 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 dee. There we are. So, what I'm going to do now is finish this video then I'm gonna find an allen key or a size that fits because that is really not acceptable you shouldn't have any sort of player like that in your allen things because what happens is this gets rounded that gets rounded and everybody's unhappy and then you gotta drill it out again okay a little bit of a clean I'm not cleaning the rest of his bike, he can do it himself. There we go. Now that looks fairly awesome. So I've been David, you too have been awesome, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers!